Hi guys, Adam here. So, all I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go through all the stuff that we've already created and just try to make it a little bit more pretty and then we'll add some conditional formatting to some things and you'll see how much this report changes over time. Now I apologize if, if I'm all over the place because I have an idea of what I want, but I don't know exactly what I want. So, the very first thing that I'm going to do is if anything is 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 going to be in the way um, that's affecting like charts and graphs. I'm just gonna I'm gonna move it. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way. I know that. All right, that's that's out of the way. If I delete any rows or columns in here, the chart won't be affected. And I have an idea where you know I think I kind of want charts. Well, first let me remove this stuff. Um, I kind of want the charts to be over here. So right now we just have one chart. I'm just gonna make it really big. And I want the data to be over here. So the first thing that we can do relatively quickly is, is add a new row here. And, you know, let's say that, you know, our call, our, our report is going to go to here. I'm going to merge the cells together. ESXC268 uh, class, class report. Cool, I have that. I'm going to make that nice, big, and bold. Um, I'm going to make the color green. These are UVM colors. Uh, I'm going to make the text that color. And you know, I know, I mean, the title is going to be big, so 80. Maybe it won't be that big. 80 is kind of big. It's going to 60. And let's go, let's go 42. So what I did there, I just quickly changed the font size, row height, and some different things. So we need these start dates, end dates. I'm going to move them over here for now. We need them. And we need these two. These are what we manipulate the charts and some of the data with. And the first thing that I'm going to do, unrelated to any visualization, um, I have the number of days in this formula. I'm just going to take it out because I don't really want it there. And to do that, I'm just looking at my formula where that is. Okay. You don't have to worry about this. Now the days are gone out of there. Okay, cool. Now let's start organizing this thing. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a column here. I kind of want like wellness to be an area, injury status to be an area, and exercise to be an area. We already have that. And then attendance also to be an area. We already have that, but I'm just going to organize it a little bit differently. I'm going to move everything for wellness here. All right, this is kind of my, move this down. This is my wellness area. I'm gonna do the same thing with injuries. And I'm merging and centering the cell for the, for the title of what that, what that area looks like. Attendance percent, you know, maybe eventually I'll have, so that, that looks kind of lonely on its own. Maybe I'll this be attendance, I'll this be percent of this number here, number not here. Just, just for now, just to have another section. Again, doing the same thing, kind of making it big and bold. Let's be consistent here. We have one row in between each of these areas. Do the same thing with exercise. Again, I know I'm going through this really quick. I just wanted to make sure that you guys were kind of exposed to what I was doing to make this pretty, and then you guys are going to do it on your own. And I don't even know if this is going to be pretty, so we'll see how it goes. I'll probably wrap the text on all these in case I end up, I end up shrinking things. So this is what I have so far. Pretty cool. Now, where do I want these start and end dates to go for the date range? Usually I have filters at the top, so yeah, let's leave a little bit of space there. Let's put them there. Start date and metric of interest for the chart. Maybe we'll put those over by the chart somewhere. Grabbing things, just moving them around. And you know what? I actually don't really want this column anymore. I need it. Okay, so now I've reorganized some things. Put a couple of boxes. around each item. That's a little bit offset. Again, I can just drag things and move them. 
This is from our last class, so we have some things on here that I don't necessarily want to be there. Through. All right, got boxes around some things, but I've got a nice little chart somewhere around here. Okay, we have a report going. Maybe I'll make this column. This will be like my my weird column that I can make wide, and eventually you won't see the grid lines when I when I hide them. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Maybe let's let's do the same thing that we kind of did with the title here. I don't really know what color I want to make this. Make these gray. That looks okay. I'll increase the size of all of these to maybe be twenty. That's kind of big. Maybe eighteen. Maybe sixteen. I'm just going to call this. I'm just call this exercise. Okay, so now we're just doing some things here. We're just changing some things around. We've got a report structure that's a little bit different. All right, now um, now let's let's add a couple more boxes to these things. Again, I'm just kind of going through this. I don't I don't know exactly how I want it to look right now, but at the very least, let's start with all these rows. Highlight all these rows. Let's make them the same same height. I think it's 20. I don't really know what it's going to be. 20, and it's kind of big for now. I don't know what the sizing is going to be. Let's say 50. That's okay. Now all these grid lines are kind of annoying, so highlight all this stuff. Let's make it all white. Let's make it all white. I'm gonna make this column a little bit bigger. It's 12. Actually, let's do that with everything. So all these columns, except for the first one. Let's figure out, maybe this is 12. Nah, it's a little small. 14 looks okay. For now, at least. Um, maybe we can mess around with this one too. Maybe it should just be 28. Yeah, maybe smaller than that. All right. Let's keep these highlighted just so just so we know that these are, these are entry things for us. Like this should be a drop down. Yep, perfect. All right, now we have like a little mini report that we could just highlight and print off. Um, and next, we're just going to get into some conditional formatting. Um, yeah, actually, as I'm thinking about this a little bit more, uh, I think I want to change a couple more things around. So, I mean, this doesn't look great, to, to, to be honest. So, uh, let's start. Let's make the rows a bit bigger. Uh, maybe. I don't really like the filters actually up here on their own. So, I'm going to do another strategy. Or maybe I merge and center a couple of, of these items. These have to be bigger too. Bold them, wrap them up. Just say here, average. And now what that allows me to do is I can move these alongside there, and maybe I have something here that's like. Something like over time. By the way, nifty little thing. So right now this is chart title, and we know that we can switch this, and the data will change. If you click on the chart title, and you go into this box up here, or you type in equals, you can make it say anything you want, and so this is going to be 
dynamic where I'm, I'm going to want it to say whatever's in there. If I click enter, now it says latest RP. If I switch to stress, my chart will say stress. It's a cool little thing, but now I know kind of what, what's selected all the time. And uh, I also want these, these are kind of small. I want these to be bigger. I want to add a little bit of space in between these and, and the dates. And the nice thing, so the more columns you have, the easier it is to manipulate things where, you know, maybe I just want a little bit of space. So I'll make this like four or five row height. Now there's a little bit of space between these dates and, and these boxes here. I think the next thing I will do is, oh, I didn't want to do that. I want to do this. So then I have some area here to play around with to move these filters. Sorry. Again, I'm sorry if you're not following this. I'm just kind of going through, like things are going through my head, and I'm just moving things around. Yeah, I want a little. Maybe I will. I'll want a little bit of space, space here too. So, so like five for now. I don't know what it will be. Um, sixteen. That's, uh, I'm looking at this font size. Is that sixteen? These are eleven. Um, at least to be legible. Have these be twelve at least. Now I can't see overall wellness completely, so I'll make that one a little bit bigger. Um, these are also kind of small. Let's go at least 12. I'll, I'm, I'll probably change those again. I'll wrap them around, just center them. That's what I'm using with these tools up here. Maybe this is date range start date. This is date range end date. And let's do the same thing. An important thing is consistency. So, you know, I have these things bolded. Those are the, I guess, the the things that I can manipulate. So I'll probably bold those too. That that way I know that I can manipulate all those things. Okay. Uh, this, these are too many, too many rows above here. I just need one to create a little bit of space. I actually don't really like that yellow text either. And... Uh, the gray is a little bit boring too, so maybe change that to white, change that to that color. Makes it a little bit more exciting. I should make this go all the way over there. So let's just create a thing here, a box for it. Um, let's bring this over there. Okay. Now these, if these are centered, these are centered. Maybe I want to center everything just for now. Oh, it already is, I guess. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. This yellow is still kind of, it's kind of striking. It's kind of bold. I like this color better. This box is pretty bland right now. Give it a little, give it a little juice, maybe. These blues. These are from the UVM color palette too, so. And then I'm gonna, so right now this, this box is white. What you can do is you can fill it to have no fill, then there's no background color. I'm gonna do that. And then I notice the green that I use is not the same as this green, so if I right click, or I should be able to just fill it. I'm gonna use the same green color that I just used. It should be a little bit helpful. And I notice there's a little border around the box. Again, if I right click, there's something that says outline here. No outline. All right, this is coming together a little bit better now. Still seems kind of congested. One, one strategy that I like to use uh, to help remedy this issue is I'll highlight all this a color, a subtle color, like maybe it's gray. It's gray. Yeah, and then maybe this is all gray too, just every other. Looks a little bit better, I think. 
I don't like how these boxes are touching those ones also. You know, I'll create another column, make it small, make it small, small column, fill that with, with white. And maybe fill like this like little box around this. Those are my filters. That's pretty cool. Um, probably do the same thing here. Um, I'll do the same thing here. I'll make didn't I? Maybe I changed it. These close So those ones. Move this box a little bit. So to me, this is looking way better now. Um, maybe there's a little bit space in between, a little bit less space in between these two things. Make sure everything still works. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Cool. All right, now I think I'm ready to start getting into conditional formatting. I'm somewhat happy with this, and you'll you'll see too. Oh, I should make this white too. Um, that. You'll, ch I mean, it's a very personal thing. Like you'll probably end up changing things over time as you go through them. Um, maybe I'll just big, put one big black box around this whole thing, just to know that's kind of my chart area for now. Okay. Oh, one other thing. I need to do a formula, maybe just to make it consistent with these. So I have the most recent. I know what date that is. I have a date range. I know what dates those are. And if I change these, those should be. Yeah, so that should change. Good. And now I want to have a year average. And one way that we can do that is, or display the dates for the year, is we take the minimum date from the year and the maximum date from the year. Um, it's going to look like a formula sim similar to this, and we didn't go over this. Um, but. I'm just gonna do it if I can remember how. Google's a good a good friend of mine, so I might have to use that. We'll see. So I want to get the minimum value to the maximum value, but I also want to make it text because if I don't, actually, you'll you'll see what happens. Man, I know the name of my table. It's table data, and I know that I want the date. So if I do this. That'll just give me, yeah, that's what I thought. It'll give me a number. So when you see here this concatenate, that means add something like uh, add some text or add some things together. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to use that. So I want to concatenate or add to, add together or show together the minimum. And you'll see that's text one. And then when there's a comma, it's going to ask for text two. So if I do this, space, dash, space, now it's going to put together the minimum date that's a number with a dash. And then the third type of text I want is going to be the maximum table data date. So now what I'm telling it to do, I think, is I'm telling it to put together the minimum date a dash and the maximum date. The problem is that these are going to be numbers, like I thought. So there's a formula called text that changes numbers, or that can change date. You can pretty much tell Excel how to format your your stuff uh, in any way that you want. So before the minimum date, I'm going to say text. So the value for the text is the date, and the way that I want that date formatted is going to be mm dash dd. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Text. And I want the, the maximum date to be formatted the same way. Mm dd. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we'll see. Okay, so now our year average date range is 121 to 220. Okay, that's good.